Good morning. Previously, we defined three locations for an object in simple harmonic motion. Positions one and three are at the maximum displacement from and on either side of equilibrium position. Position two is when the mass is at rest position. Now let's determine the very basics about the magnitudes of the velocities, accelerations, and spring force at those positions. Flippin' physics. Hello, Olivia, Kevin, Anish. It is lovely to see you again. Yeah, yeah you too. Too. The demonstration here that is in simple harmonic motion is a horizontal mass spring system on a frictionless surface. Anish. What do you notice about the direction of the velocity as the mass goes through positions one and three? The direction of the velocity as the mass goes through positions one and three? Oh, it changes direction. That means the velocity is at one and three are zero. That's just like the velocity in the y direction at the top is zero for an object in free fall, right? Correct. The velocities at positions one and three are zero because the velocity of the mass changes directions there. Just like the vertical velocity of an object in free fall is zero at the top of its path. Kevin, what do you think that means about the magnitude of the velocity of the mass at position two? Do you mean when it's going to the left or to the right? Either direction. Everything we are talking about today is the magnitude of the quantity, so the direction is irrelevant. Okay, well, if the velocity is zero at the two endpoints, I bet it has a maximum magnitude in the middle at position two. That is correct. We will show why the magnitude of the velocity of the mass has its maximum value at position two in just a bit. But first, Olivia, what do we know about the force of the spring? Well, according to Hooke's law, the force of the spring equals the negative of k, which is the spring constant, times x, the displacement from equilibrium position. Oh, and at positions one and three, the displacement from equilibrium position has its maximum magnitude. Therefore, the magnitude of the spring force is at a maximum at positions one and three. And at position two, the displacement from equilibrium position is zero. Therefore, the force of the spring is zero at position two as well. I suppose this is as good a time as any to point out that the magnitude of the maximum displacement from equilibrium position is called the amplitude. Which means, when the mass is at positions one and three, the magnitude of its displacement from rest position there equals the amplitude. Anish. What does the magnitude of the spring force tell us about the magnitude of the acceleration of the mass? Uh... Use Newton's second law. Oh, right. The only force acting on the mass in the x-direction is the spring force. So the net force in the x-direction equals just the spring force. And for this question, it does not matter if the spring force is to the left or the right. So let's just make the spring force positive. And the net force also equals mass times acceleration in the x-direction. So the acceleration is literally proportional to the spring force, which means it follows the same pattern as the spring force. The magnitudes of accelerations at positions one and three are their maximum values, and the acceleration of the mass at position two equals zero. Oh, okay. So when the displacement from equilibrium position equals the amplitude, the mass is the maximum spring force and the maximum acceleration. Correct. Now let's go back to velocity for a moment. Looking at the force of the spring in the demonstration, Olivia, how does the changing force of the spring show that the magnitude of the velocity is greatest at position two? Well, the spring force is always directed towards the equilibrium position. Therefore, according to Newton's second law, the spring force is always accelerating the block towards the equilibrium position. That means if the block is moving towards the equilibrium position, the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity of the block and is therefore speeding up the block. Oh, right. But if the block is moving away from rest position, the acceleration is in the opposite direction as the velocity and is therefore slowing down the block. So the magnitude of the maximum velocity of the block must be a rest position. Right. Very nice. Lastly, Kevin, is simple harmonic motion also uniformly accelerated motion? Well, Anish just showed us the acceleration is different in at position two than it is at position one and three. So obviously no simple harmonic motion is not uniformly accelerated motion. Right. Now, I know it may seem obvious right now that the acceleration of an object in simple harmonic motion is not constant and that you are never able to use the uniformly accelerated motion equations when solving simple harmonic motion problems. But please, a few months from now, when you're trying to solve a problem having to do with simple harmonic motion, just, just remember that you cannot use the uniformly accelerated motion equations. Please remember that. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.